Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this semi-abstract landscape just using one colour and that's Payne's Grey. Payne's Grey is uh, made of black and blue put together as far as I know and these colours often split out a bit if you paint with them wet in wet. And using one colour can be a great way just to experiment um, without getting hung up, hung up about colour choices. Um, this kind of experiment is, each one will be different, but the sort of method, method is roughly the same. Um, I've got some cold pressed paper, it's cotton paper which is best for this. Mine is Saunders Waterford. It's taped to my board with decorator's masking tape and my board is at an angle of 45 degrees or so and that means the paint should flow nicely. First thing I'm going to do is wet the sky all over. I'm using an extra large uh, Pro Art Ron Ranson Harky brush for this and I want my sky nice and wet because I know I'm painting a landscape even though I don't know what sort of landscape it will turn out. I just want to experiment and play and sort of go with the flow of the water, so to speak. I'm not putting very much water across my foreground, but I'm putting a few um, strokes and a few splashes of water um, in the hope that I'll end up with a fairly random effect. As you saw on my tips of my brush, I loaded it up with almost tube consistency paints grey, lots of paint and I'm taking it across um, a horizon line, which is um, slightly lower than halfway. Maybe it is about halfway up the page. Should have been a little bit lower, but I mean, that'll be fine. It looks like the paint's starting to run already. I'm going to spatter some paint in and flick it in with a bristle brush. It's just an ordinary bristle brush that you use for acrylics or something like that think hog bristle and now as the paint's doing its thing it's sort of bursting out into the wet sky area I'm watching it and looking and seeing if there's anything that I think that I can do to enhance it so using the tips of the brush I'm just going to pull along a few lines and get some of the paint flowing a little bit more across the page in shallow diagonals because that's the kind of um, gives me a little bit of the look of perspective across the land. I've picked up more very heavy paint. This time I'm putting it across that horizon line in a slightly more definite way because I've decided that um, it's going to be distant trees and fields from the way that the paint flowed to start with. You could of course turn a scene like this into anything. I mean, the only limit to this is your imagination. This is putting in a sky, again with the Payne's Grey. I'm starting off with quite a heavy, rich mixture of it. And now I've washed my brush out, um, got rid of a lot of the water, and I'm diluting uh, the paint turning it into a graduated wash so it gets a lot lighter as it comes down the page. I'm not going to do too much with it because if you fiddle too much with skies they can look overworked and you can end up with some strange marks. But what I will do is turn the board round and knock it just so that I can get some some of the paint that's there and pooling up around the wet and dry areas of the foreground. Just get that to run a bit more. Now that's starting to look quite interesting, I think. And remember, if you try something like this, yours will be completely unique. So with a bit of practice, you'll learn how to sort of manage the runs and the drips of water and how best to sort of exploit what watercolour does naturally. That's some dry brush just swept across the foreground really quickly and that gives me the impression of a sort of a ploughed field across the front or maybe some grass or, or something like that. I want to darken up my foreground now to balance it up with those dark trees and those dark hedges and field borders. So I'm um, again 
tips of the Harky brush, very thick, almost tube consistency paint, and I'm running it along the wet edge of that, that mark there, that brush stroke there, and it's registering as sort of like, you know, sort of a maybe a, f a field boundary or something like that, and some dark across the bottom corner. Into that dark paint, I'm going to etch in with the corner of a plastic card a few sort of windswept grasses just coming up into the painting across the tape just to add a little bit more definition and to the foreground there to start with. And I think that'll do for now. I think I've got something to work with, so I'm going to lay it flat and let it dry completely, then come back and add some details. It's now completely dry, so I'm going to have a good look at it and decide what to do with it. Painting these sorts of imaginary made up landscapes, um, semi abstract ones, uh, can be lots of fun, but can also be a way to find out new techniques or, or new ways of doing things when you actually paint something a bit more planned. So it's a great way to experiment and to get used to what watercolour will do um, in a wet in wet environment um, when you just really just splash it around on the page but in a fairly controlled way because what I've done is painted mainly across the horizon and then I've brought out field shapes from those original marks. I've decided that I'm going to turn those larger blobs across the um, background into distant trees. So using my number two De La Rowney graduate rigger and a rich, inky, flowing consistency of Payne's Grey, I'm going to paint in some tree trunks and some branches. I'm pulling the tree trunks down through that white area because then they will show up more and show up really nicely in contrast against that white area, which could just be a light field or it could be a snow field. With something abstract like that, it, it could be anything, particularly just painting in one colour, which paints grey, which gives us full range of colours, um, of shades and tones from black through to the unpainted paper um, and lots of shades of grey in between but I think you could see across the horizon that some of the blue from the Payne's grey has sort of split out a bit and we've got some quite nice blue, bluish tones there too. So I'm just pulling out some smaller branches a little bit beyond um, the marks that were made with um, with the wet in wet underpainting. I think they're already looking like trees. Putting a bit of shadow with nice thick black paint or Payne's grey, running some shadows just along through that slightly paler mark, um, along that kind of tree bound, um, field, field boundary area. I think I'm going to paint a larger tree a little bit further forward in the same same way um, using the rigger to paint the trunk and the main branches and a few smaller branches. This is a bit closer to us in the mid-ground, so I want this tree to be slightly larger than those ones further back. So I'm building up the branches and then in a minute I'll paint on some foliage. Make sure the trunk is a bit thicker than the trunks of the, of the um, distant trees. This is a small squirrel mop, 
and I'm going to graze the brush across above the branches and build up the canopy of the tree. I don't want to cover all the branches. I want to build up the canopy so that it just becomes a little bit bigger than the trees beyond. Some slightly darker paint. But I think that's a bit wet, that paint. I'm not keen on that. I'm going to dab that out with a tissue. And I'll leave that to dry and I think I'll come back and do something about that canopy once that's actually dried. I think it needs to be quite a lot darker. But the final thing that I'll do is paint in a nice, much larger foreground tree. Still using the rigger. The rigger is a really good brush for painting trees with its long, um, fine, flexible hairs. You can flick the brush and get some nice sort of um, uneven, random looking branches. And flicking off at the end of the branches means that you get a, a finer branch at the very end, all the sort of little twigs and things. Again, with this we'll put some foliage on afterwards. I'm trying to add a bit more detail to this tree because this is the foreground tree. When you make up landscapes like this, you could put all sorts of details in, anything that you want really. You know, the, the, as I said before, the only limit is your imagination. Um, you could put fences, there could be little cottages, farmhouses, um, or distant hills, distant mountains, uh, sheep, cattle grazing in the fields, a flock of birds flying in the sky. say the only limit is your imagination really but these kinds of scenes it's a great opportunity to practice your brush work and things like that um, this is my small calligraphy brush I'm using this now to dot in more Payne's grey for the foliage of this large tree I don't want to cover all the branches that I painted, but I do want to get enough um, foliage over the branches to make it look like a fairly convincing tree. It needs to be reasonably detailed as it's further forward. around the edges of the canopies, I'm sort of dotting and dashing so that it looks like there's a few stray leaves coming out here and there. Just a bit more dark around the base of the canopy. This is nice, rich, um, inky consistency Payne's Grey to give me a nice dark finish there. I just need to thicken up that branch a little bit more. It was a bit too thin. Just running a bit of shadow underneath the tree as well, darkening up across the base. sort of adds a bit of continuity um, to this sort of line of trees that we've got now. 
and then using the Harky brush to uh, brush on some quite dark paint across the corner over the tape so that I've got um, a darker foreground, maybe some cloud shadows or the shadows of a tree just out of the picture. And I think that's about finished actually, um, although I'm not sure about the middle tree. I'll take the tape off and have a look at it and see how it looks. I've got a feeling that middle tree needs to be darker because my distant trees are very dark. So, but taking all the tape off and seeing it with a clean white border is a good way of seeing your painting with fresh eyes. Um, and then you can see whether or not it needs anything else doing to it. So I'm going to take a bit more rich Payne's grey on my small calligraphy brush and I'm going to go in and add quite a bit more darker paint and it will lighten as it dries a bit. Don't want it quite as detailed as this front tree but it needs to be darker than it was. Now this is looking better already. It's balancing the painting a lot more. It, was, it wasn't balanced um, because it was too light. And I think that's almost there. One more thing, while the main tree trunk is still damp and the canopy there is damp, I'm using the corner of a plastic store card to run some extra branches through and to add a few light textural marks to the trunk. And I think I'm going to call that finished. Well, I'm very pleased with how that's turned out. The sky is lovely and soft, nice wet in wet um, diffusions of the paint. And I think it's really interesting to see the different um, nuances and tones that you get just from using the one colour, Payne's Grey. This kind of made up an imaginary landscape can be a great way of learning how watercolour behaves. Um, there's no wrong or right way to do it. It's just really about having fun and exploring. And that's the best way, I think, to progress with watercolour painting is to enjoy yourself, but to explore and find out what watercolour can do for you, um, especially with the sort of wet in wet um, technique. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. I'll see you again soon then. Bye.